Yin and Yang. In ancient Chinese philosophy, Yin and Yang is a concept that describes how opposite forces may actually be complementary to each other in the natural world, and how they may even strengthen one another. Yin and Yang seems to be prevalent no matter where you look, even in Elden Ring. And with the build I have today, I'll teach you how to become a master of Yin and Yang by utilizing death sorceries and holy incantations, two totally opposite arts of magic, and yet they complement each other beautifully. This build is entirely based around balance, and it's an absolute unit in PvP. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the build. Starting with the stats, this build is at level 150. Now keep in mind, my intelligence, mind, faith, and arcane are being boosted here by an additional 5 levels because I'm wearing the America's Sword Seal Talisman. So since this build utilizes light armor and has a Sword Seal, we'll be taking much more damage than normal. For that reason, we're going to invest kinda heavily into Vigor with 50 points to increase survivability. My mind is at 35, so we have a decent amount of FP to be able to throw out some good rotations before having to replenish with the flask. Endurance is at 25, and I accidentally had a talisman equipped here that increased my strength by 5, but my strength is actually only at 11, and I didn't invest any points into strength or dex for this build. Intelligence and faith both are going to be at 50 to get the best scaling for this build, but we'll get into that more shortly. Moving on to the equipment, in the first main hand slot, you're going to want to equip the Prince of Death staff. We're doing this for two reasons. The first being this staff scales off of intelligence and faith, which will work perfectly for this build. The second reason is it increases damage output of death sorceries, and all we're running is death sorceries. Therefore, every single spell cast will get a damage buff from the staff. Now for our offhand, we'll have the Golden Order Seal. This also scales evenly with intelligence and faith, just like our staff. Having both our staff and seal scale with intelligence and faith is going to really help keep the damage balanced. That way, you won't find yourself leaning towards mostly using your spells or mostly using your incantations, because this will really hinder you from using this build to its full potential. Going back to the main hand, I have the Cane Sword equipped with the Magic Affinity and Glintstone Pebble Ash of War. Although this build is supposed to be a full caster build, I ended up deciding it would be best to have a melee weapon equipped to be able to still fight if you run out of FP and are fighting an extremely aggressive opponent that won't allow you to replenish your FP. I chose the cane sword because it has such low requirements to wield and it was the most aesthetically pleasing for the fashion souls aspect. Now with the armor, I had two goals in mind when choosing. The first one was making sure my equip load stayed at light, that way I can have more iframes when dodging. If you don't know what iframes are, it stands for invincibility frames. The more iframes you have, the harder it is to get hit. And since this build basically has no defense, you're going to want all the iframes you could possibly get to increase survivability. The second goal was to be as aesthetically pleasing while sticking to the yin and yang theme, which obviously means I had to go with white and black. Now onto our talismans, we've got Merica's Source Seal to increase specifically our mind, intelligence, and faith by 5 levels. Next is the Green Turtle Talisman. This is going to be super helpful when going against more aggressive enemies because it increases our stamina recovery speed, so in between dodges we're more likely to regain just enough stamina to get another dodge off. This will make it a lot more difficult for the enemy to land attacks on us. After that, I went with Radagon's Icon since the entire build is based around casting, this talisman is going to be absolutely crucial to have. The last talisman you'll want to equip is Godfrey Icon to increase the damage for Death Lightning, Ancient Death Rancor, Wrath of Gold, and Radagon's Rings of Light since they can all be charged. For this build, we're going to utilize two different items that really help take it to the next level. The first is Ancestral Infant's Head. This throws down Spear Vapor on the ground, which damages enemies over time as they walk through it. This item is amazing for zoning, but I'll get more into that in a minute. The other item is the Regal Omen Baron. The projectiles it launches has some of the best tracking in the game, and they have ridiculous range, even better than the Ancient Death Rancor. The damage scales with faith and intelligence, which makes it an excellent addition to our arsenal, and when used in the right rotation, it'll allow us to completely overwhelm our opponents. So for that rotation, you'll want to start out by using two Ancient Death Rancor, immediately followed by two Triple Rings of Light, and finishing it by using the Regal Omen Baron. And while we're on the subject of rotation, let's talk about some of the other rotations you should be using with this build, as well as some of the useful tips to make sure you're getting the most out of everything this build has to offer. 
Once you master the timing with this rotation, you'll feel like a total bully. It starts by casting one or two triple rings of light to try to bait your enemy to rush you. As soon as they start pushing, cast Explosive Ghost Flame. This will do huge damage and launch them backwards onto the ground. As soon as you start the cast for Explosive Ghost Flame, you should swap your highlighted incantation to Radagon's Rings of Light. That way, as soon as you land Explosive Ghost Flame, you can start a fully charged cast of Radagon Rings of Light, which, if landed, will knock them to the ground again. Swap to Wrath of Gold and run right up to the enemy as they're getting up to cast it. The number one most useful tip for this build is to utilize the hell out of your zoning abilities and items. If you don't know what zoning is, it's when you use specific abilities that have an AoE or area of effect damage. They usually do damage over time or gradually apply various status ailments such as death blight. These abilities are going to be essential for controlling the battleground and manipulating your enemies into keeping a distance so you can keep launching attacks at will. Although this build is mostly meant to be a caster, it can also exceed in close quarters as well. By swapping from your staff to the sword we have equipped with Glintstone Pebble, we go from a defensive playstyle, where we're trying to keep the enemy as far away as possible, to a very aggressive playstyle by utilizing the Ash of War that really hits like a truck and countering people's attacks with Wrath of Gold. When it comes to using Death Lightning, even though it does do insane damage, I'd highly recommend using it only for zoning, since it applies a huge area of death blight after the cast. When casting Radagon's Rings of Light, if you can, make sure you charge it all the way so you have a better chance of hitting your enemies. This has one of, if not the largest AoEs in the game, and it hits so hard. A tip for casting Triple Rings of Light is if you notice your opponent is starting to push forward during your cast, just unlock for them so you're free aiming and throw the Rings of Light at the ground. This will create a saw trap for them to run right into. Now you have all the knowledge you need to become a yin and yang sage yourself. If you enjoyed the video so far and want to try the build for yourself, let me know by hitting that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see new and original builds like this in the future. I do drop new builds every single week, so there's a lot more to come. I also stream over on Facebook almost every single day at 3 p.m. Mountain Time, so if you want to come hang out with me and join our amazing community, make sure to check me out over there as well. I went ahead and threw in some PvP clips so you guys can see exactly how this build works in real time. Boom! Boom! <laughs> hey, come on, bro! <laughs>
there, buddy. That's uncalled for. GG's, big fella. Nice try, baby. Uh, I will after this fight, but this guy ain't gonna give me a chance. Nice.